Okay, um, I wanted to create this video. I thought it would be um, uh, easier. Well, I wasn't quite sure how to put it in writing, so I thought I'd create this video, kind of go over programming and so forth. This is actually a program I've uh, written over the last um, uh, few days. And I wanted to go through a spreadsheet, and uh, this is VBA language. Um, but the same components you see here, ones you see in uh, different, different programming. And I have it looping through, and I'm not going to go through and explain what all this is doing, because um, that's not the point of what I'm showing you here. But as I was developing this, I, um, I would leave various things off. Like I'd forget to put this line of code, or I'd forget to put the um, end if in the right place. Now, in some cases, programming is such that it tells you where that um, problem is. In other cases, it takes hours and hours of um, staring at your code to find that missing uh, piece. Um, sometimes it takes debugging to go through and go through it uh, line by line. There are techniques that simplify that. Um, they're I put my siding on, so ignore that hammering. <laughs> um, but uh, realize that uh, this is a huge part of um, huge part of programming is um, patience. If you don't have the patience, if you looking for a missing uh, semicolon, missing comma, and it, uh, you know, after two seconds you just can't take it anymore, then you're probably not um, a programmer type. If you're very patient and it's, it's kind of a challenge for you to find that uh, missing, missing semicolon, missing comma, missing indef, whatever it might be, then uh, programming is way. Now programming has changed from when I, uh, when I was a programmer in some some cases. In uh, many cases now, companies no want to write their entire computer system th themselves. When I worked at IFR, uh, I, I worked on a manufacturing system, wrote a manufacturing system that did uh, the shipping, uh, it did um, customer service, it uh, tracked materials around the production floor, and I think that was all the different components of it. It took me a while. I mean, uh, seven years I worked on this uh, system while I was at IFR. Well, I left and went into education because I, um, I, I love teaching. And, um, well, they realized at some point that we could sit here and write our system and get it exactly like how we want and it might take us 20 years to eventually get it written. Or we can buy a system that's already written and have it in place in six months' time and get the benefit right away. And uh, a lot of companies do this. They they end up buying a, a program, a system called SAP. Does it have all the bells and whistles that I put in there? No. Do the do the um, end users, the individuals in the company, like it as well? No. Um, but it gives them a very quick uh, re quick results. And there's another company that's sitting there modifying it and changing it and so forth. And they might have the um, the resources to put a hundred uh, programmers on changing this changing the system, where IFR would have maybe two programmers or one programmer, uh, so they, they can commit to that. So they not only see uh, immediate results with the system being put in place, but then they also see the changes. Does that mean you won't be programming? No, uh, might be a different type of programming. Might be like you do an add-in to put in a, a, an additional screen or you. You write a program like what I did here in VBA, just so you can um, get your results. Now, um, the a huge part of that then is to implement systems and to maintain the systems. So it's it's changed where we wrote our program completely from scratch and, and then maintained that and so forth, to where um, you don't got that uh, responsibility, that headache. So I think in a way, it's actually become better to work in the computer science field as a computer programmer. Okay, now um, in terms of um, classes, I'm going to show um, Fort Hayes, and I can pick any college. And I'm, I, I haven't, I don't even know where their computer area is here, so I don't know this ahead of time. So excuse my um, <laughs> if I can't find it right away. But I, I'm going to click academics, and I'll click um, what am I click? Majors, minors, and programs. I guess sometimes department and colleges uh, have it too. Okay, get down to here. I'm looking for computer or information. Probably looking right at it. 
here it is, computer science, mathematics and computer science. And I get down here in mathematics and computer science, let me click that. Okay, it takes me over to here. And, um, okay, computer science there. Okay, academic programs. Now, you see this one here. It's math, math, minor, okay. Let's see in their computer science. Probably looking right at it. Mathematics and computer science. Yeah, click that. And there's only one academic programs. Yeah, let me read through it a little closer. Okay. Uh, BABS in mathematics, BABS in mathematics, minor in computer science, minor in math. Hmm. May not have that much on computer science right here. I may have chose a poor college to go to. Let me um, back up. If it's not under computer science, it might be under a different name. Okay. Uh, information. Mathematics. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, well, let me just uh, go down here and see if I can find uh, computer science. Or information. Okay, well, let me go to a different college. <laughs> let me go to Pittsburgh, um, Wichita State. I bet I can find it. I'm trying to show this. I, I was going to have the page already loaded, but then I thought I want to show show you how you would you look. What would you look for when you go to these websites? Okay, um, I'm looking for academics right here. Okay, majors and programs. Let me go there. A to Z list. Okay, here they got computer engineering. Now, computer engineering is typically um, more of like where you're trying to write a computer program uh, to control a processor board in a computer. So it's very um, uh, low level uh, programming. It's difficult programming. Um, now here they have computer networking, which is uh, not really programming, and then computer science. So as you read through these, you have to kind of kind of figure out what in the world it relates to. Now um, I go down here to information. I don't see information. Sometimes you see it under security. I don't see anything under security. So that looks like the only places. So let's go back up here and click computer science. Tells us program information, uh, can view, view the website. Um, if I click um, this, I'll click the bachelor's there. And it comes up, talks about the computer science, what you need to take, major requirements. Um, as you read this, the courses will kind of dictate to you what the four-year college is like. You see here it talks about programming language concepts, uh, paradigms, object-oriented programming, design analysis of algorithms, assembly language programming. Uh, that right there tells me it's very low-level programming. What their their computer science is, and I know this uh, from just for information, is they, they used to have a computer science program that was separate, and it had... Um, it had some accreditation problem. Uh, it wasn't that there was a bad program, but they had trouble getting faculty to teach teach the courses. Why would they have trouble getting the faculty? Well, um, somebody that gets a major in computer science, which like I did, doesn't usually go into education. I took a twenty-one thousand dollar pay cut to go into education, um, and somebody that's making a hundred hundred thousand in the computer science field is probably not going to take a forty thousand dollar cut to go to Wichita State to teach. Well, they could get um, uh, faculty from other countries. They could bring them in, but they were limited by how many they could bring in. So what they did is they merged with the electrical engineering uh, department, and now you see it's electrical engineering and computer science department, which is a strange combination, but their computer science now is more geared toward the uh, programming like um, the processors like I, like I indicated. Now, if I go to Pittsburgh State, if I can actually remember the name of it. Um, Pitt 
Okay, this is where I went to college. I uh, got my bachelor's and um, learning. Let me go to academics. Academic, let me see. Let me choose majors and minors. <laughs> Should be familiar with my own college, but I'm not. Um, there's nothing under computers, so it's probably somewhere else. There's used to be under the business business um, side. Uh, let's see, mathematics. I don't see anything there. I went right above it, or right past it up in business. Uh, well, let me search for it then. Or actually, here's College of Business. But um, let me search. Now what you're going to find is that they used to have a pretty robust, okay, here it is. They used to have a pretty robust computer science program. But now if I come here, um, Systems Design, Computer, there's two of them, Computer Information Systems, um, Assurance, and Security. That's the security one. And this is where Systems Design. Now, if I do uh, searches down here, you see those four are the only ones there are that says Computer. That doesn't mean it isn't uh, also under another name, Information. Uh, that isn't it. Um, Let's get back to here. <laughs> so, um, looks like this might be it. So I click this. And this will uh, show you the classes you're, you're to take and so forth. And again, the, the classes are what's important because when you get down there, that kind of tells you what the program's um, based upon. So I get down here, Visual Basic, C++. Now you notice these are a lot more specific than, um, than Wichita State was. Wichita State was more general. What you're going to find is that they're this one's probably more application based where you're actually programming and getting experience where Wichita State might be more theoretical based. Um, I'd like to tell you that every college has the same degree of difficulty, same uh, requirements, everything in the computer area, but they don't. It used to be Coke Industries in Wichita, Kansas, KOCH, they would never talk to anybody from uh, Wichita State from the computer field because they didn't like the how they had their, had their program design. They would get uh, graduates from Pittsburgh, from Emporia, and from Fort Hayes. Those were the three most popular ones. They liked K-State and KU, but they were um, they had to pay them more, so <laughs> they didn't get, get uh, people usually from there. Okay, so this appears like it's not completely security. Completely security means you wouldn't do any programming at all, which would be bad. Um, and it says database management, very important. Okay, now that I've talked about uh, the what to look for and so forth. And you see here it says Java. Let's uh, let's look at that in more detail. The site that you want to go to to look for computer-based jobs, and this is across the United States, is Dice.com. And Visual Basic was one of the one of the items that was at Pittsburgh State. So let me enter in Visual Basic and see how many jobs there is. I'm gonna get rid of the, the site there and just search. Out of the 87,000 jobs on Dice.com. As soon as this comes back, that's slow. Then it comes back and tells us to 10,000 um, involved Visual Basic. Now that may not be true. You see how some here say VBA, which is what I first showed you in Excel. Um, that's Visual Basic, but um, kind of different. If I come here and I put quotes around Visual Basic, all of a sudden we change to 643 jobs. So this is how many jobs across the United States are looking for Visual Basic programmers. Assembly language. We saw that at Wichita State. So if I search for assembly language, put quotes around it, we see there's 29 jobs across the United States. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's um, uh, not much demand. Well, there isn't much demand. There's no way the other way around that. But it could be that the assembly language is embedded more into engineering type jobs, and which wouldn't be on here. This is more of a computer science um, type field, networking, so forth. Java. Java was one that I saw at Pittsburgh State. If I enter in Java, 16,974 jobs. So, um, you know, out of the 80,000, uh, that's almost a quarter. Well, close to a quarter, let's say. So let's say 20, 22 percent of the jobs want you to know Java. Java is a big one. If I'm going to go into computer science at some point, I want to uh, learn Java. 
Now, um, another one is uh, I think Pittsburgh State had database management. If I look at SQL, which is the programming language to talk to databases, 22,739 jobs. Um, they want you to know SQL. SQL is everything you do in computer science. Um, so what this allows you to do is when you're trying to evaluate a program you're going to go to, is it a good program? You know, if uh, there's one um, one college in, uh, I Googled it, <laughs> that uh, focuses on Fortran. This was popular back in the 1800s, maybe, uh, <laughs> back in the 60s, 50s. Um, you see there's 63 jobs that um, are focused on Fortran. If you get a, a degree that's where the major is focused on a Fortran, Fortran programming language, you're probably not going to be, be very marketable. You're not probably not going to get employed. Used to be Emporia State, used to be focused on COBOL. This was about 10 years ago. Um, COBOL was a big part of their, their program. And you see there's only 525 jobs. Again, compare that to how many we saw with Java. Why were they programming or why were they teaching COBOL when, when COBOL isn't that uh, popular? Well, there's not that many jobs out there for it. It's what they knew. Uh, part of the hazards of uh, being in the computer science field from a, from a structure standpoint is you de design the program around what you feel comfortable with. When I um, designed a computer science program at um, Cali, I designed it around what people are looking for. I didn't design it around what I was comfortable with because I didn't want to do that to students. I did not want them to go and get a four-year degree, you know, go to Cali and go to another college and, and not really have the skills to get employed. Um, so, I, again, I use that as my basis. C Sharp. This kind of become popular. It's increasing more. 7,918. There's C++, which is 4,793. Now, um, you'll find that many colleges have two different pathways. Now, I say many because it's just kind of changing, you know, as we go along. Uh, it used to be that the, every college had two pathways. It had the computer science pathway, which you'd have to take up to um, Calc 1, Calc 2, or Calc 3, depending upon the college. And then they had the computer information science side. That kind of the same programming, but you didn't have to take as much math. You'd have to take the college algebra and then business calc, and that was about the extent of it. I got the computer science degree myself. You get the computer science degree, that opens you up for 100% of the, the programming jobs. You get the computer information science degree, and you can only, uh, you can't, you can do everything except for like engineering type programming. You couldn't go for Boeing and program some of their engineering applications. But uh, the computer information science side is probably about 80% um, uh, of the jobs out there. Now, um, I'm going to go to Cali just to show you. I'll go to academics. I'll go to natural store right here. It's actually in two places. In the computer science. And um, you see we have our computer science and computer information science. We also have information security um, certificate of completion. We used to have more more than these, but people aren't going to program. Even though there's lots of jobs out there, they just don't go into it. Um, again, every four-year college is kind of evolving. Uh, Pittsburgh State is just mainly having a little bit of security and then some programming, like the computer information science side. Uh, Wichita State is kind of going heavy duty with the computer science. Uh, Fort Hayes even looks like they're evolving. Um, so you have to look at each college and figure out what, what you want to do, really. Um, now, I've kind of gone over what, what does a programming job entail. Uh, went over uh, what kind of characteristics you have to your personality to uh, be a programmer. Um, I talked about the, the ways to research your particular college. I, I talked about Dice.com, which gives you an idea on that. Um, I always tell people as they go along, and I, I saw this when I worked at Coke Industries. I started at Coke Industries. I programmed in COBOL. That's, again, a programming language from the 50s, 60s. Some places still use it, but it's not uh, something you want to put your future in. Um, I started programming in COBOL. And uh, after three years, I think it was, Visual Basic 1.0 came out. 
and I saw it. It was a hundred dollars, and I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna buy up my own money and see what I can do with it. Because Windows was had just started up, and I got Visual Basic, bought it with my own money. I learned on my own. I wrote some programs for the um, accountants at Coke Industries, and uh, the program downloaded mainframe data to a GUI. They would mark what data they wanted to download it. Uh, the, the accountants loved it. it was just, I got a lot of praise for it. I didn't tell my manager ahead of time what I was doing, uh, so he kind of chewed me out in that way. He said, "You know, you, you know, you should have told me. You know, don't don't do that again." But he said, "The, the accountants love it. Keep doing it." <laughs> and uh, I moved from being a hundred percent COBOL programmer to get into Windows programming. Well. Uh, others didn't want to change. They kept programming in COBOL. Eventually, there was 40 COBOL programmers that were sent out the door by Coke Industries. Part of the computer science field is you have to keep up to speed. You have to keep evolving yourself. Um, I've been uh, teaching now for 12 years. My skills are becoming out outdated. Um, I need to I need to evolve, or I'll, I've never be able to go back into programming. Uh, so that's important. In mathemat like mathematics, when I teach mathematics, it doesn't change. Uh, you know, college algebra today is the same as it was 100 years ago with the exception of the, the graphing calculator. Um, it'll be the same probably 100 years from now. But computers are constantly changing. And if you're not willing to keep evolving yourself, keep learning, then the computer area is probably not where you want to go. Okay, now web design. Uh, I'll pick on Cloud's website here. Um, you see there, there. Um, you you do your you put your mouse over that. It drops down to the menu choice. Very very nice design. I actually like the website a lot, but it's not real fancy. You know, it doesn't got some of the flash that you run across in some other uh, some other sites. Uh, Fullsale.edu used to be a um, real fancy website. I'm not sure what it looks like now. Had um, uh, flash. Had all kinds of things. Um, HTML5 probably now and so forth. This is very functional. And um, I like this because usually when you go to a college's website, you would want to find something fast. I'm not looking for something fancy, you know, some flashing thing. I want, I want um, simplicity so I can find it and, and locate my information fast. Part of, uh, if you go into web design, is I, did, I was a webmaster for two and a half years. I did not have a creative side to me. Um, like you see here, this little window here kind of set in and so forth. That's kind of creative. Um, there's other websites that are a lot more creative. Uh, there's some that are less creative. I think Cali's is a lot less creative than this. And, um, you know, this, this here pops up this menu. Some uh, web design packages that you have will do this for you. So they'll handle this. And then, but you still, in some cases, have to know what to add in. If I right click on this and say view page source, you see here it talks about um, uh, style sheets, JavaScripts. Um, this says web resources. These are um, programming, programming behind it. So you can look at that. And um, here's some more. Some of these uh, maybe the web webmaster wrote. Um, some maybe they just uh, incorporated in. It's hard to say how they did it in the cloud. Uh, some of these you purchase and then you put in. You have to know where to put in uh, the appropriate field. When something's going wrong, you have to be able to uh, read through some of this and figure out uh, where to make changes. I've worked with some web design packages where uh, it didn't allow me to, to fix it like I wanted to. So I had to actually look at the HTML. I had to look at the XML or whatever, whatever code there was. Now a um, person goes in web design, the best one is the one who's creative. I was not creative. I did not create good web uh, pages. Because a web page typically is supposed to sell something. Mine was very functional. I'm very technical. I could write whatever you want program wise, but I couldn't cl come up with some con some something clever. Um, then you have your your um, people who are do got the programming side that can again can put functionality to it. Um, occasionally you run across somebody that's both creative and functional and they can uh, do the entire package but oftentimes you you have two people that achieve that role sometimes uh, the other person's external to the company but that maybe gives you an idea of uh, web design you may have done web design where you just um, drop things in like um, a GUI 
and not any programming at all. And uh, that's fun and so forth and gives you uh, some very nice websites, but to give it a true power like a database. Like if I want to sign in somewhere, if I go to iCloud, you know, to create this where you sign in. Well, this is a package I'm sure they bought, but um, you had to understand maybe the programming behind it to understand how to implement it. Um, maybe they wrote this. I don't know. Um, but this is where you have the programming, where you enter in your username and password, and you have to understand all the security behind that, too. Security classes are good, good if you're going into programming. In some cases, they're, they're called SQL injection attacks. If I come here and do like a... a Oh, it's been so well on. You do like like or something, single quote. You do an asterisk or something like this. And then your password, you, you put equals zero or zero equals zero, which is always true. If um, you put some kind of bizarre thing there, if you, if you uh, Google SQL injection attack, you'll see this. But there's ways you can hack into somebody's website if they, if they don't know what to do from programming slash security standpoint. Anyway, hopefully I haven't uh, blah, blah, blah too long, but I wanted to give you an ad adequate introduction to computer science, and I just could do that with writing the email, and I didn't have until this morning free to actually work on it. So I apologize for that.